To call NFTs a phenomenon would be a hilarious understatement. Never before have I seen something so ferociously take over art, art discussion, and the internet in general in such a short amount of time. Well-known musicians like Jay-Z, Post Malone, Dead Mouse, and Snoop Dogg have participated in them. Even artists I deeply respect have dipped their fingers in the craze, such as Quentin Tarantino and Aphex Twin. The mere mention of NFTs causes emotions to flare up, whether you are for or against them. It doesn't help that they are also an utterly confusing and frustrating topic to talk about. The very concept of an NFT is hard to understand for lay people. I've been researching for weeks and have interviewed many people in the community, and I am still uncertain about some of the finer details. If I were to explain non-fungible tokens as quickly and basically as I can, they are secure digital receipts that are associated with the ownership of digital files or anything on the internet, really. Anyone else can copy this file and save it, but you own this one. So it says. People will buy and sell these receipts that are connected to these files for seemingly exorbitant prices, much like how someone may collect baseball cards or Beanie Babies. However, you don't need to know exactly how NFTs work to understand this question. Why do they look so ugly? Many of you may be quick to point out this is a generalization. Since an NFT can basically be any digital file, or anything on the internet really, the types and quality of NFTs are about as diverse as any other form of art. Take, for example, this intricate 3D bouquet inspired by Flemish still lifes, or these exquisite line-filled drawings, or this pinball machine-inspired animation, or this cheeky parody of Bernini's Ecstasy of St. Teresa. But I think it's fair to say that many of the prevailing, mainstream NFTs that dominate memes and the public consciousness are NFTs like these fellas. Crypto punks, crypto kitties, bored apes, and lazy lions. NFTs that have become the target of quite a lot of ridicule for their perceived scammy nature, environmental impact, obnoxiously devoted communities, and ugly designs. While those other claims can be debated, I can confidently say I agree with the last one. Crypto punks are just so nothing in terms of aesthetics. They're so basic and bland, I can't really find anything collectible about them. Crypto kitties look more like rats to me with their tapered bodies and perfectly circular eyes. Bored Apes designs are off-putting and have anatomical detail in all the wrong places. On top of that, the whole whoa, raunchy monkeys that smoke weed and shoot lasers out of their eyes frat boy tone of them is just irritating to me. Lazy lions have this clip art sheen and slightly malformed facial structure. We have hundreds of examples of furry art that has facial designs that are far more pleasing, and I think even normies would agree with me. They are overall not the kind of quality work that I would expect people would pay tens of thousands of dollars for. But I think the overwhelming reason for their ugliness is the simple nature of their creation. These are the kinds of NFTs that are made up of slight variations of a single base model. This is usually achieved by generating them through a program that algorithmically randomizes layers with different accessories, skin colors, facial expressions, and things like that. In fact, it's not even that difficult of a process to create a collection such as this. You don't even need coding knowledge. If you ever felt that mini lazy lions, for example, look kind of awkward, like elements seemed completely incongruous, that's because they're being pumped out by a machine. And the base model has to be kind of stiff and lifeless to accommodate so much variation. It also depends on what specific parts are being generated. Combining clothes randomly may kickstart the next fashion craze, but when you combine facial expressions at random, you can come up with some truly bizarre and off-putting faces. As if the details of how these eyes and mouths and noses fit together hasn't been all that thought through. As a result, you're probably going to generate a lot more NFTs that look weird than look decent. If you go onto the artist for Lazy Lion's Twitter, you may find something that surprises you. When the artist draws a custom lion, even in a sketch, there's a noticeable improvement. Immediately I can see this one is more alive. That clip art sheen is wiped away. It almost looks like a character with thoughts and feelings. I'm even more impressed with this animated version of a lion. Taking the time to carefully animate the expression, the jumping hat, the puffing cheeks, has somehow torn it away from its machine-like clones. You know what? If they were all actually like this, I might consider buying some. But of course, putting in that kind of effort is pretty infeasible if you plan on making 10,000 of them. Quantity over quality. Even though these kinds of NFTs often fall into the trap of looking stale and awkward because of how they're made, 
there's still some NFTs that I think pull it off better in terms of aesthetics. Cool Cats has a cutesy minimalist aesthetic. They have a clear advantage in making their designs less awkward when generated because the items they are combining are so simple. World of Women, I think, has the most congruous designs in the sense that if you picked one out, it could stand on its own as a vector illustration made by a person, but it's not anything I would praise. Dream Loops is a pixel art and music NFT that takes clear inspiration from Vaporwave aesthetics. Notable about this one is that although visuals and audio were programmatically generated, the melodies for the loopable tunes were individually composed and assigned unique drum tracks. What I'm doing is a bit odd for NFTs, since often they are not talked about as art at all. People will talk about markets, blockchains, decentralization, communities, collectors, and of course, how much money people are making. Few talk about the actual image you are buying. And people in the NFT space will tell you the focus of NFTs isn't the art. Given this information, it's clear why a lot of NFTs lack aesthetic concern or originality. The value of NFTs often goes far beyond their aesthetic qualities. There are NFTs that give you benefits like rarity, help you win more in digital games, give you access to the metaverse, access to communities, and of course, many of them are bought for speculation. But again, I can't generalize. Looks can still play a big part in success. Having a diverse looking collection is important so that rare items are sufficiently differentiated from common items. And having a collection that clearly has zero production value is probably not headed for the same success as others. And I suppose having a fair amount of NFTs that are ugly in a series is a form of diversity. When I asked people in the space why they bought some NFTs over others, looks did indeed play a part. I interviewed Begenbot, who owns three board apes. This ape, for example, he chose because of the matching DMT skin and expression. He was wide-eyed and mouth open, like he's actually tripping on DMT at the time, and the leather jacket looked cool to me. In short, it's better to have your NFT collectibles look clean, diverse, professional, and have room for combining traits in neat ways, but being conventionally beautiful, let's say, is certainly not the focus. I may not like how they look, but some do, and some appreciate them personally and use them as part of their internet identity. NFTs are not all created equal. NFTs like CryptoPunks, Dream Loops, Lazy Lions, and especially Bored Apes are in a higher tier, so to speak. Bored Apes does give you full commercial rights, so if you buy an ape, you can, for example, put it on a t-shirt and sell it. The Bored Ape Yacht Club is constantly building the brand, making deals, starting gimmicks like mutant apes, and encouraging community camaraderie. They are the trendsetters for making an NFT successful. Say what you will about Bored Apes, they are not a rush project. But I can't say the same for a majority of NFTs. For example, Freedom Bunny's clan looks like some badly taxidermied bunnies whose accessories consist of clip art. This one is called a Crypto Dragon, but I first thought it was a lizard trying and failing to hide a baguette in its mouth. Good god, I hate these with a passion. They're just so simple, and yet so, so ugly. You can see that the edges are all pixelated because I'm guessing they screwed up trying to give it a transparent background. The eyes are clearly ripped from some sort of clip art, and the way the arms are connected to the torso is like if you took out a Lego minifigure arm and didn't push it in the socket all the way. Wait a minute, what the hell? These were traced from some sort of minifigure, but not a Lego one. Yeah, someone on Discord found out these are absolutely traced from something called bear bricks. Hilarious. This one insults me as someone who makes and loves pixel art. It's clearly just an image of Deadpool that has been downscaled. This person takes famous images of celebrities and puts a bad oil painting filter over them while trying to pass them off as if they were actually painted. Look at this one, they call this an animation of the step-by-step -step process. No one on Earth paints like this. No one haphazardly lays down the colors like this without any sort of blocking in. Live punks are live-action NFTs. I'll give them points for creativity, but man are they disturbing. Mutant apes are in a higher tier of NFT, I suppose, but most of them are just so deliberately revolting, you couldn't pay me to own one. This one gets me the most. Not only is it astonishingly ugly, it's also traced from a promotional image from the movie Shark Tale. They couldn't even bother to, like, go into the movie and find a more fitting frame of this character, maybe one with both of its arms down. They are just that lazy. These are NFTs from people who objectively do not give a shit. In fact, they make bored apes and lazy lions look like the Mona Lisa in comparison. 
It seems to me, just from scrolling through sites like OpenSea, that these things are clearly not made by artists. More like people who have never picked up a paintbrush using the bare minimum of visuals to generate get-rich-quick schemes. Sadly, as much as there are dedicated artists in NFTs, as the technology goes through its growing pains, there's going to be an abundance of this garbage. NFTs are in something of a Wild West stage, and this technology will likely go far beyond trading JPEGs. Blockchain technology has been suggested as a way to verify tickets for concerts, secure healthcare records, secure property records, even aid in facilitating an online voting system. Because it is an emerging tech, NFTs are also plagued with problems and bad actors. There is very little in the way of regulation. Art theft is rampant and easy, and has caused one artist to threaten to shut down their account. An NFT bro's solution to this is often, make NFTs of them first. Scams are rampant. After joining the Board Ape Yacht Club and Lazy Lions Club Discord, I was approached with scam messages twice. Some say NFTs are ideal for money laundering, and even doing simple transactions can be disastrous if you're not paying attention. Despite all this, there is still a strong community around NFTs like Bored Apes. When looking for information about this stuff, people were pretty enthusiastic to share their experiences and thoughts about their involvement in the space. Many of them acknowledged these problems and wished they weren't there, but understand them more as growing pains that they hope are resolved as the tech is developed. One person in the Lazy Lions Discord told me his thoughts on the whole matter. I think the reality of how it has enabled many talented people to monetize their work should be celebrated. The NFT space has a long road to go in terms of bringing people in and making a space that is safer from scammers and rug pullers, but that part of it is being considered. You can also find communities that you vibe with. The art is absolutely a part of it, but it is also a community and network access group with people all across the world. Many on the outside view this devotion as cult-like. NFT holders have gotten the reputation for being very outspoken and engaging in hype, getting tattoos, putting their apes on literally everything, and rapidly encouraging each other whenever someone buys an ape. Some seriously have the belief that their apes will hold their value long enough to be passed down to their children. Some believe NFTs will replace traditional art. The Artnet News Twitter account, which usually posted articles about the art world, has been completely gutted and is regularly handed over to NFT people who obnoxiously shill them all the time. Animated shorts like the Red Ape Family and Super Doge are used to promote their collections and are some of the most embarrassing creations to ever come out of the internet. To call Red Ape Family amateur is an insult to amateurs. Super Doge is a step up in terms of animation, but that's not saying much. NFTs have spread like a virus to seemingly every corner of the internet, and in many instances it comes across as people rapidly adopting something just to make a quick buck with no further thought or planning. It seems like everyone's selling NFTs. Even the dead, apparently. Hey, considering Bob Ross's love of nature, I got a feeling he wouldn't be too thrilled about this. This Funko Pop NFT. And even more bizarre is a collection on OpenSea using George Floyd's image in fucking Floydies. I have to say, it's pretty impressive that in one day, I was confronted with the three most despicable acts I have seen this entire year. Oh wait. There's one more. Let me tell you a quick story about Quinny Art. She was a talented and popular artist who suffered from many medical issues. Her art would sometimes consist of poetic expressions of her experience, and she was an inspiration to many. Eventually, she was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and passed away a few months later. Someone impersonated her and turned her art into an NFT. I truly feel for artists at this time. When artists are constantly screwed over in terms of getting fair payment for their work, the chance to make real money off of something you love can be very tempting. Things like ugliness, scams, rampant art theft, annoying hype, and trampling on the dead are all things that, in the long run, can theoretically be ignored as matters of taste or are the acts of a few bad actors. Those who support NFTs will point to the potential benefits. Decentralization, liberating artists, cutting out middlemen, bypassing gatekeeping galleries, and creating a technological revolution. What really matters is if there is anything fundamentally wrong with the system itself. That's where the environmental impact comes in. I can't blame those who don't know, because this kind of information may not be obvious to people first starting them. Most NFTs are bought and sold using Ether, 
which is part of the Ethereum network. In this network, crypto miners engage in a computational race in order to validate transactions on the blockchain, and earn Ether as a reward through a mechanism called Proof of Work. This system requires warehouses full of computers that use a lot of electrical energy. What seems to be a misconception is that NFTs themselves cause environmental harm, when in reality, according to CBS News, it is more like how the networks NFTs are built on are secured that is fundamentally energy intensive. According to The Verge, it's still up for debate whether NFTs are significantly increasing emissions from Ethereum, or if they're just taking on responsibility for emissions that would have been generated by miners anyway. But if more people demand NFTs, this may increase the value of Ethereum, meaning miners buy more machines to mine, meaning more pollution. Currently, Ethereum and Bitcoin's energy consumption has frequently been compared to that of small countries. To say all NFTs are equally harmful for the environment would be a lie. Other cryptocurrency networks exist, like Tezos, which uses a proof-of-stake mechanism, which is said to be much more efficient and creates far less emissions. Things like carbon offsets also exist, and in fact, many in the NFT community are open to and encourage efforts to improve cryptocurrency technology, such as the Crypto Climate Accord. Even Ethereum announced several years ago it would move towards proof of stake instead of proof of work by 2022. The fact remains that there is a lot of uncertainty out there about the energy usage of this technology in exact numbers. The data is very new, and everyone should be vigilant and skeptical. But mining cryptocurrency absolutely does have an environmental impact to at least a considerable degree. And so far, the only articles I found that seem to downplay the environmental effects of cryptocurrency and NFTs are those written by companies involved in cryptocurrency. Before making this video, I said to myself I would go where the information leads me. I have considered everything, and while the idea of NFTs is interesting, and it may have a lot of opportunities for digital artists in theory, there are so many problems with it as the system currently stands that I cannot support them as long as these issues remain. It's a shame that such a fascinating technology has been taken over by so many bad actors and scammers. I can only hope that changes. For now, they are a showcase of human greed. They are as ugly on the inside as they are on the outside. I would like to thank these people for allowing me to interview them. This was quite a research-intensive video, and without their help, this wouldn't be possible.